Okay, I think uh, we can get started. So, uh, hello everyone, and thank you very much for being here. Uh, just let me introduce myself again, um, because it's my you know, second presentation. So anyway, so my name is uh, Tiejun Chen, uh, just call me uh, Tiejun. Um, I'm staff two engineer and uh, technical leader from uh, VMware Octo, office of the CTO, office of the CTO. So you probably imagine um, I'm probably uh, I'm supposed to working on some innovation and research. That's true. So our team, uh, our team is trying to uh, incubate some new project and new area at VMware. So on my side, I just uh, get involved uh, like um, live with OS and the unit function as a service and unit hardware assisted virtualization and the unit uh, uh, automotive system and edge computing, especially for that um, machine learning um, interference at edge side. Okay. So before I joined the VMware, I worked at some company like Wind River System for Wind River you know, Linux kernel and BSP and even uh, Wind River virtualization development. And also I joined the Intel OSTC, uh, Open Source Technology Center, so uh, trying to enable some hardware feature to the open source project. So uh, that's it. Uh, today, uh, back here, today I'm going to talk about something about that uh, edge computing, edge computing system. Um, that's uh, trying to build some integration between that ROS and that HX. You might know that um, they both are popular open source project. Um, I want to make this talk on with uh, this item. Um, first, uh, is some background of what's the ROS HX, and then introduce our approach, our solution, and also show our um, simple machine learning inference framework, and then to share um, how to um, fit them into that um, real-time requirement, and even um, based on my some uh, experiments to um, talk about intelligent edge computing. Um, I will add up this presentation um, by mentioning my hardware uh, developer environment. Yeah. So overall, I don't want to um, dig into that these two projects or even edge computing. Uh, they're supposed to have more presentation to make that very clear. I just want to use this, uh, introduce these two projects and this integra integration to uh, help you get into that edge computing. Just uh, start or uh, enjoy that edge computing journey from your side. So, so uh, what's ROS? So, a ROS is a robotic object system. According to the definition from that Wikipedia, the ROS is that um, open source and met operating system for your robot. But actually, it's not that new operating system. Even it's not that operating system. Okay, it's just can provide some service or you would expect from the operating system, like uh, low level um, device control and even some hardware abstraction or even some. Um, communication across their processes and that uh, packaging management. They also provide some uh, utility and tool and library. You can use them to set up your environment and develop ROS and write code and run the ROS, just like this. So uh, it's like a ROS framework, okay. So ROS are currently just run on top of that uh, Unix-based system. Uh, it's tested and validated um, by like Ubuntu and that Mac OS system. So at this point, oh, we can see that no, ROS is just the middleware, just middleware. Okay, this is ROS. Um, ROS has on three uh, level that uh, concept. The first is that field system level. Um, it's specific to that ROS resources, like that um, package. Package um, is a basic unit of organized software in that ROS. Uh, it may contain some uh, no, runtime uh, node and even that uh, dependent library and even some configuration file. Okay. Mental package is specialized in that uh, software uh, package for all, um, you know, uh, which that's just um, provided that uh, only so to that provide that uh, other uh, re related that uh, package information. A manifest uh, is that XML file. It provides metadata information about that package, like that name and description and the version and the license and you know, some dependency, just like that. A service message on, I'd like to talk about that with this next slide. So next concept is a computation graph level. Graph is that um, peer to peer of uh, our network at the ROS process that uh, loose coupled with that uh, ROS communication on infrastructure. So um, there's uh, several um, concepts. Um, one is that like node. No. Node that is the process that performs that uh, uh, computation. It's just like a fine-grained task in the ROS. 
and must, no, uh, must provide some service like name registration, and even can look up um, those registered other computation graph. Without must, nodes cannot find each, uh, find them, uh, find with each other, and exchange message and invoke some service. Uh, message uh, nodes communicate uh, with each other by passing us a message. So the message is just a you know, simple data structure. The topic uh, now the message is routed by the transport system by you know, with that um, publish and subscribe semantics. Like one node can send out a message to a, uh, by publish it to that one given topic, any subscriber can receive that topic and get that message. Service, um, you know, Rust essentially is that distributed system. They need that um, request reply, that communication mechanism. So um, in Rust, um, this is done with that um, service, which are defined by that a pair of that um, message structure. One is for that reply, one is for the request. Okay. So um, Rust uh, just open source. Um, as a summary, uh, it's very popular in the robotics um, community. And even you can see that in some industry IoT, even you can see that in the automotive system. It has a good ecosystem. Another project I want to mention here, that Ross Industrial, is another open source project. No, it's, targeted, uh, it's targeted to that enable that, uh, extend that capability of uh, Ross to that some uh, manufacturer. You can see that some uh, top manufacturer leader right here. OK, that's a uh, Ross. The next is AJAX. Uh, I'm not sure if you have heard of AJAX. Um, AJAX is targeted to that uh, IoT edge computing. So because of when we talk about IoT edge computing, we face some challenges. Like you, we have the different uh, the software, like open system, besides all that traditional uh, Linux and Windows 10, uh, that uh, particular IoT OS are specific to uh, those IoT endpoint device. Okay? And uh, even uh, there are various types of that hardware platform. You know, based on x86 or based on that ARM, even that RISC file. And uh, there are another challenge is uh, there are various layers of IoT architecture. So we talk about IoT, Internet of Things, uh, we need to connect the thing to the cloud. So some things, uh, they are AP capable, they can be connected to the cloud directly, so the two-tier structure. But most uh, devices cannot be connected to the outside directly. For some reason, they are not AP cable. Or even they are not AP cable, I don't want to connect that to the cloud directly for some reason, security, and uh, even some cost. So I want to know, uh, encrypt the data. I even I want to filter the data and uh, aggregate data, something like that. So besides this, the thin and the cloud platform, the edge system, uh, the edge layer, three-tier architecture. Uh, even we all have that uh, edge server because uh, we have realized uh, at edge side that we need some power computing and storage right there. So for for uh, four tier architecture, thin and uh, edge gateway and edge server and cloud. Um, okay. Uh, some pro uh, other problem like that protocol. You know, these devices are connected uh, with a rest of the industry on uh, connectivity or uh, network or uh, protocol like um, Modbus and maybe um, some uh, Bluetooth and even some uh, Zigbee, something like that. And uh, even um, if you want to connect to the cloud, um, you have some uh, protocol specific to IoT, like MQTT and uh, the COP, something like that. And uh, even when we go to the cloud platform, those are top um, public cloud provider, they have their own that cloud platform specific to the IoT. And, uh, you know, IoT is a big scope of um, you know, application and uh, even a security measurement. So you have to make the, your decision on which one is best, which is good for your, uh, in your case. So it's very hard um, for that uh, in, uh, production environment. So we have the Edge X Foundry. So basically, Edge Foundry is a um, common open edge computing framework. Uh, essentially, that containerized uh, um, open source uh, loose coupled that microservice architecture and build that uh, communication over the REST uh, API. This picture is a uh, big picture to that uh, uh, architecture. Um, you can see uh, there are four on service layer from bottom to top, uh, device service layer, and the call service layer, and uh, the supporting service layer, and exporting and application service layer. And plus uh, to that system level of service layer, security and uh, management. I think that this architecture is straightforward. So the purple part 
not the core layer of the IGX function. Why? You know, talk about IoT, I think just two things. Connect the data and dispatch that command. You can see that data and command. But we need that uh, layer, device services to build that communication between the physical device and the service, so device service layer. On top of the cost of the layer, now we have the data. So uh, you can define some service um, like that uh, alert, notification, and rule. And even you can build your user-defined additional service right here. Um, Besides of this, sometimes you want to export your data to the cloud, or you want to share the data um, with the other that uh, edge instance. So with the edge, uh, we have that export service layer. It can help you um, export the data outside. So again, just remember that um, Edge Foundry has a microservice architecture. So if that network is accessible, that means you can deploy at this service, distribute this service anywhere. So uh, there are some flexible that uh, deployment. Like um, you can deploy the device service layer, just device service layer on that endpoint device. Other service can be placed to the cloud. Just think about the two-tier architecture. For three-tier, uh, you still can deploy that device service layer to the endpoint device, other service layer to the edge gateway, or you may um, deploy all services related to edge gateway. Fourth four tier, the similar, there are similar situation. Just according to your own user case or your requirement to deploy that edge X boundary. So uh, you can see uh, there are also some uh, good pattern ecosystem. Um, there's an overlap between that uh, ROS and that edge X. Okay, so uh, now back to my side. Um, uh, in our team, uh, part of my regular work is about um, something uh, with HX Foundry, and some efforts are about uh, ROS. So uh, I was thought, uh, I, what if we uh, build them together? We really need that, because uh, those systems are uh, featured with ROS. You still need to consider that edge computing. You still need to consider how to connect this system to, to the cloud. Back to HX Foundry, now, they are a challenge to the HX Foundry. Remember that uh, device service layer. That means that you have to write the new device service if you want to support that some device. That would be a big challenge to the Edge X Foundry. And uh, even though uh, Edge Foundry essentially is in its infancy, so um, you need to figure out how to think some new um, uh, vertical user case to build that good ecosystem. So I um, build some experiments in my spare time. So what do we do? Um, this approach and the solution is not difficult. Something we can do that in environmental environment, uh, just like ROS can play as that device service layer to Edge X Foundry. Or in contracts, Edge Foundry can play as that ROS node, just like that. And even I try and put that in the, um, in the context of the virtualized environment. Um, it's like uh, I mentioned in my first presentation in terms of that uh, AGL uh, virtualization solution, automotive grid things virtualization solution. So what we can do? The first uh, way is that ROS as a device service layer for the HX Foundry. That background is that HX uh, architecture, right? So in terms of device service layer, I deploy the ROS. Think about in some system, oh, there are some device um, uh, Edge Foundry does not have such that device uh, service can support them. We have ROS. ROS can support them. And then I register this uh, node into that um, Edge from device service layer. Here, I'm trying to leverage one existing that um, uh, Edge from device service, MQTK, device MQTK. And then also um, create some mirrored device on top of that, uh, MQTK device A, B, C, D. The, the core of this uh, device go on, um, that is Edge X ROS uh, adapt driver. I will register that callback function to this that ROS node. So once data we connected, the callback is triggered, and then this driver will convert this data uh, to that um, MQ device, and then send out to that um, call service layer. Just like that. I'll give one example. Um, for example, um, you know, ROS typically can take over the IP camera or even as a USB based camera, and uh, also have that packaging. 
to uh, expose that uh, video of streaming outside, um, so, uh, like that it have that topic on a major role. And uh, back to EdgeX, um, I leverage device MQT Go and uh, use that uh, uh, ROS that um, subscribe to um, subscribe this topic and uh, enable this uh, callback, uh, immediate callback, and then convert that immediate to that uh, open CV um, with next function. And then that X Foundry had the opportunity to take over that image, take over the video streaming. Uh, even we can do that uh, machine learning inference after that. So another way is uh, very simple, okay? We put down that uh, HX, um, sometime Edge Foundry can take over some device. Mm. In terms of that uh, HX, HX Foundry that uh, export the service layer, it supports MQTT. So I export that data to that local MTT broker, and then I register new that HX node to the routes, and then we can use this mechanism to build the communication between that routes and that HX foundry. Uh, my experiment is that uh, I use the HX foundry um, by um, enabling an HX model bus device service layer to um, connect some of uh, sensor data, like a temperature and humid humidity over that um, IS-485 model bus, and then and call that MQTT bridge and to um, let that ROS can pass this information. So uh, another uh, thing about the virtualization environment, okay. Here I built up the one minimal that um, super VM, just like a uh, domain zero in that uh, Zen architecture, but I hope our solution is uh, have a uh, agnostic. Anyway, I just deployed the edge device service layer in this super VM, where I pass through all the industry that IoT on this controller or use some interface to this VM. And this device service layer can take over, um, plus that router can take all that device. And then we are deploy the other device service to the, um, uh, other that service to the different uh, VM. After that, I can build that um, communication across this VM. We, can, we, have, we have opportunity to build that um, secure and trust that our communication. Uh, even uh, in the virtual environment, uh, um, more important, we have a chance to uh, monitor and uh, detect that uh, physical bus and physical device, that behavior. So I still um, extend that example. Um, just one thing is different. Uh, remember we knew that uh, local MTT broke to um, broker this message between that uh, ROS and HX foundry. So here what I'm doing is, uh, um, you know, in the environment, environment uh, you have to consider that a security issue. So instead I put that uh, local MTT broker to the one or many more OS, uh, Unikernel, I love Unikernel. Uh, Unikernel is a specialized single address machine image by Unilib OS. Essentially, I just keep those necessary components to on this OS to make sure I just run on that one game application. It's very small and quick boot and secure and have very good air performance. And uh, here I use one existing exist Unikernel OSV uh, to make this. Okay, this is some um, solution approach of that uh, integrating um, between that ROS and HX Foundry. So the next, next topic is about that uh, machine learning, edge AI. So on the right side, um, I grabbed this picture from um, Gartner. You mentioned that uh, edge AI. You can see uh, they are in that innovation trigger free just with two, five years. So edge AI is very promising. Uh, we need to do something in this area. On my side, I like to distinguish that uh, edge analytics from that common edge computing. The common edge computing, or we probably are just on filter data and uh, aggregate data or pre process that some data, just like that. But, uh, in some user cases, like retail or even the industry IoT, uh, we want to do that machine learning inference. Okay. So that means uh, you need to use that machine learning technology uh, with some model like a predictive or prescribed model. It is also uh, need to speed up by some uh, hardware accelerate specific to that edge. I'll mention that. Okay, um, now what we have now, um, now we have ROS. ROS has been built in the open CV. That's good. And the uh, edge device, uh, as I mentioned, um, now, um, many of the hardware advantages produce uh, various type of hardware accelerate specific to that uh, edge. You have to consider power consumption, something like that. And uh, even we can um, have flexible edX development. So this, uh, this framework is just like that. Um, one node is that the camera uh, captures the data, captures that image. 
and then um, pass the message uh, with that video stream open CV on that service. And then I build that common machine learning inference service node right here. It's um, composed by so, um, several components, like a pre-processing. Sometimes you need to resize that image to make sure that image can be, um, uh, can work very well with that uh, machine learning model, right? And uh, even that model, another component is the model adaption. Just uh, like I show here, there are various types of AI accelerator. Um, it's different from a cloud that um, hardware accelerator, like GPU, FPG. You have to enable different uh, SDK or the toolkit to use this uh, machine learning, uh, this AI accelerator. Um, like that, um, this one, that Intel VPU, you know that. Um, you have to convert that common um, that machine learning model to um, another format, XML or binary file. And even back to that uh, Google GPU, um, it can support that uh, TensorFlow Lite, but you still need to uh, use that tool to convert that TensorFlow Lite format to another format, and even that uh, Google GPU can work with that. Uh, even sometime, uh, maybe we can um, figure out some way to optimize that model. We put this task into that model adaptation, this component. Then we can do that machine inference. After that, um, we use that export service to export that interference result. Another node, AJAX node, oh, they can, you know, they just subscribe this topic and then can get that um, result, interference result data, and then according to um, our uh, predefined policy to take some action. Uh, next topic about real time. Um, now basically, HX and ROS, um, they are sort of that uh, service um, framework. So it's very hard to um, meet that hard real time requirement. You know? Just can uh, meet the soft real time. Uh, but we can do something to make this better. So one way is, uh, you know, they are based on running on that Linux distribution. Uh, so the first thing we can do is um, just integrate the primary patch to this uh, distribution, right? It's easy to make that. And even um, furthermore, uh, we can tune that this system. Like um, we can use the CPU and LQ, LQ affinity to get some um, performance better. So another way is from that uh, Linux kit. So Linux kit um, from that uh, Docker company. Um, because you know, Docker, um, is, it, I want to enable Docker to the different platform, right? but they find um, not, only, uh, not all platforms can support the Docker. So instead, uh, they release this uh, Linux kit, that's a minimal kit. The core of these two kits is that Linux. It has that very minimal Linux kernel and has a very minimal that, uh, system it needs. Just make sure uh, this kernel can support that container just like that. And uh, after that, everything, uh, you can send bulk everything into that container. Everything is a container. Everything is a container. Uh, you know, I, I want to use the Linux kit, but it does not support the primitive patch. So I just um, enable the primitive patch to that uh, Linux kit officially. So that means you now you can build that Linux, primitive Linux kit officially from this branch. Um, um, how to um, spy, um, how to um, define your um, that Linux kit image. You need this uh, YAML file um, with uh, um, some description, um, like kernel information, um, what kind of type kernel, RT or even that kernel um, version, and even the command line, and even init, um, and even the boot. Other uh, user service uh, still is a container. You can see uh, everything is a container, everything is a container. So when it's boot, just like this, I need and run C and on boot and the container D on um, invoke that's every the user service or maybe ROS, AJAX and uh, AJAX, uh, other AJAX device service. So uh, the last uh, topic about um, entire edge computing. So uh, I um, want to address that um, IoT and challenge. I think uh, just two problems. One is that segmentation, right, segmentation. Another heterogeneous architecture. But the HX boundary, you know, actually, you can build them in the native application. So um, in the user case, uh, you can, um, part service are, is running on that uh, binary application. Some service can run in the container. 
uh, even container can be built into to support that ARM-based architecture or even that X-based architecture. Even RISC-V also support that container. So in my experiment, I have that Raspberry Pi. I have that uh, some industry IoT gateway on their x 80 based I have that one ARM-based edge server. So just use this way of distributed edge iPhone plus ROS um, to make sure we can leverage this device uh, from the IoT um, endpoint device and gateway and edge server. But the problem is uh, um, when I did this is uh, how can we uh, migrate that uh, workload from uh, this node to another node? Again, uh, you know, different CPU architecture. So that, that is the problem. Okay. So uh, um, what I'm doing, uh, what I have done is uh, um, I build a different application uh, specific to different CPU architecture. Before that, according to, uh, uh, before I uh, migrate the service or migrate the application, I will detect on my destination target on which type is that, and then uh, just pull up a new docker image or new application to enable that. But the performance is not good. So this is about um, my experiment environment. On the left side, I uh, have that robot. Um, it's not a um, DIY, it's a uh, product robot. Um, you can see uh, there's a leader right there. On the right side uh, is that uh, industry IoT gateway um, from Dell, um, Dell that fires on the gateway. I connect that one camera and I even that um, Google GPU. I even uh, one external that IS485 uh, controller and do some more experiment uh, um, like I shared today in that presentation. Um, maybe I can give another. So this is one, one example. You can to the camera or to the screen. Actually, one is uh, connected through that uh, uh, ROS and pass the image to that uh, HX boundary. Another one is uh, connected to the X boundary and then pass through the ROS. And then I load that um, Yolo 3, you know, an object detection model to, to make this uh, machine inference uh, framework in my uh, experiment. I use that uh, Google Edge TPU. Okay. One is Google Edge TPU, another one is Intel VPU. Just like I guess um, this I'm trying to talk about today. So, any question? Service architecture, right? So, uh, microservice micro um, framework. So, um, I have that data to show that uh, um, show, show that latency. But uh, in my feeling, just like um, one or two second. Okay. It depends on your um, that network environment. I find if we, I can set up that uh, network environment uh, private. Uh, Separated from um, our office environment, uh, have good that uh, performance. But we, we put that into our uh, official office uh, network environment, uh, the performance is not very good. I guess uh, there's some uh, traffic uh, impact right there. Okay, we have no questions. Thank you, everyone. We'll see. <laughs>